That would be okay, great. This is my lovely home. Um, and I'm looking to change the color um, scheme to be similar to the Cambridge Trust Bank building on Main Street. Um, so I'd like to paint the trim a, a brighter white um, and the body of the um, house would then hopefully be a color called Wyeth Rose or Wyeth Rose. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Um, it's a Benjamin Moore um, uh, Colonial Williamsburg color and, um, and then do the shutters in black. I'm really um, hoping that it'll make the house pop a little bit more and uh, you know, that the, the lighter color trim will uh, make the um, columns a little bit more um, vibrant, I guess. Okay, and there's the test swatch. Okay. All right. Thank you, Judith. Uh, I'm just going to go around the, the horn here. Uh, Nia, you're first on my rotation now. Any comments? Um, I'm absolutely fine with this. Um, for me, paint colors are something that is can be considered temporary. It isn't a, a, a permanent change to the house. And I like to give people their choice as much as possible. Thank you, Nia. Luis. I think that this is uh, just fine. I am personally like the yellows, but I think that the, the color that's been proposed is uh, very consistent with uh, Concord. And I think that it's going to do exactly what the applicant wants, which is to uh, make the columns be a little more salient. So I agree with the proposal. Thank you, Luis. Melinda. Well, I figure if we approved it for the bank, we ought to approve it for you. <laughs> I, have <no> problem. <laughs> I have no problem. All right, thank you, Paul. Nothing to add to my colleagues. I, I agree. Thank you, sir. Uh, Abigail. No objection. Thank you, ma'am. Kate. Hi there. Uh, no objection. And in fact, I think it'll look, um, not that this matters, but it'll look quite, uh, you've got a gray house, I think, to the left, and then uh, the, the French house to the right of this. Yeah, yes, which is a similar a different shade of yellow, but yes. Yeah, the, I think it'll it'll look really striking. You know, thank you. In, yeah, in that combination. So it'll be fun. Thank you, Kate. Dennis. I'm <clears throat> I'm fine with it. Thank you, sir. And Catherine. No objections at all. I mean, I think color is very personal, and um, there's certainly precedent for it in town. So I think it's it's fine. All right. You just better hope bank customers don't come lining up at your door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. That won't happen. All right. Uh, is there any public comment uh, for the application to repaint to the house trim and shutters at 352 Sudbury Road? I'm looking around. Do we have any raised hands? Heather, I don't see any. All right, then I bring it back to the commission and look for a motion, please. I move that we approve the application 352 Southern Road to uh, paint the house uh, white uh, rose between white dove and the shutters black. <laughs> I need a second there. Who's going to second it? Melinda second. Okay, all in favor? Nia? Aye. Luis? Aye. Melinda? Aye. Paul? Aye. Abigail? Aye. Kate. Aye. Dennis. Aye. Catherine. Aye. And I'm an eye as well. So you're approved. Thank you, Judith, and good luck with the paint job. All right. We'll thank look you forward very much. to seeing it. it. All right. Thank you. Uh, all right. So, Heather, it looks like 572 Main Street withdrew. Yes. Yeah, so we just need a motion to accept their withdrawal. I, I move we uh, accept the motion to withdraw the application of 572. Uh, Main Street. Main Street. Thank you, sir. Second. Second. All in favor? I'm just going to go real quick. Nia? Luis? Aye. Aye. Melinda? Aye. Paul? Aye. Abigail? Aye. Kate? Aye. Dennis? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Well. All right. Thank you. 
All right, moving right along, 12 Main Street is our next applicant. To, this is to install a water fountain in the North Bridge Monument Square Historic District. And the town of Concord is the applicant here. So I don't know who's here from the town. That would be um, me, Chris Carmody from the town manager's office. And I Hi, think Chris. I'm joined. Hi. And I'm joined by uh, my colleague, uh, Melissa Simoncini from Public Works. Hello, Hi, Melissa. Welcome. Thank you. All right. Would you all mind just walking us through this application? This is at the, uh, the, the, uh, the, at the Bell, the USS Concord Park there. That's right. It's, um, right. it's, this is just a bit of cleanup from uh, an application that was approved by HDC in 2016. So thanks, Heather, for scrolling through the pictures. You can see um, on this brick walkway, uh, there was intended and approved by HDC a, uh, a granite fountain that would sit on the other side of this stone wall. Um, at the time, it it wasn't clear that the, the fountain was ADA compliant and it was later determined that it wasn't. So uh, the application before you is to complete the installation of a water fountain that is ADA compliant. So this is the um, rendering of um, the fountain that we've proposed um, that the same model exists in other um, historic districts in Concord, uh, including um, the, um, I think by that Concord Museum, yeah, the Visitor Center, the Concord Museum, and then at uh, Miriam's Corner. So um, this is just outside the Emerson House. Um, and it's generally um, used in Concord and other towns as being kind of a neutral um, function. Um, and yeah, so Melissa, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Uh, no, nothing too substantive besides the fact that um, the town needs to standardize on the dark green um, fountain, but we've been migrating to this gray fountain because, you know, in places like this, it helps blend in with the surroundings a little bit better. And it also doesn't, um, look as um, faded as fast as the dark green. So it'll um, hold up to a lot of uh, wear. And this is a standard fountain that we have in a number of locations around town so that Public Works is able to effectively and efficiently maintain the fountains. Um, so that's why we were leading towards this fountain here. Okay, thank you, Melissa. May I ask a question, Chris and Melissa? Is this rendering, this is, that's showing, all, that's all new or the bike stands there already? I, I don't think remember. The, I think the bike stands are there already, right? They're right, there Melissa? already. Okay, yeah. okay so that's, uh, I, I can't, can't say, I've been outside my bedroom for a year, so. Yeah, okay. the, the only new part is the fountain will be replacing the lovely orange cone that's uh, currently ah. hidden by the uh, rendering. <laughs> We thought that was historic, that, that cone. I'm kidding, from the USS Concord or something. All right, uh, well, it seems like a pretty straightforward application to me. Is there a, I, I didn't look, is there a cut sheet on the color? I mean, it's a, it's a sort of standard gray or silver. Um, wow. That was... I think the cut sheet's in there somewhere. Okay, it's probably in, the, it's probably in there somewhere. All right, well, let me let me go back to the commission and see if folks have any comments. Nia, what do you think? Uh, no objection. Thank you, ma'am. Luis? No objection. Melinda? I like it. I like the design. I think it's terrific. All right. Paul? Um, could I just ask, uh, it's irrelevant to our uh, our mandate, but how do we assure water quality in a fountain like that? I mean, just having been through COVID, so I'm just curious about, just curious about will well, people drink out of it? You know, will, will people use it? it? It was a dark and stormy night and the microbiologists yeah, in Concord were at work. Don't go down that road. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm happy to go into detail offline, but essentially all the fountains currently are off due to COVID. 
Um, but um, when you are ready to use a fountain again, um, these fountains, you know, they're pretty much no touch as far as the bottle fillers go. Um, so you put it underneath there and you just push a button and there's no touching of the sanitary parts. But um, we do make a very good effort to make sure that um, we place them at areas where the water quality can be assured that it will be good. And we are seeing residents of Wayland come to Concord because our water is testing better for PFAS. <laughs> so there's that. That's good. Okay. All right. I, I have like no more irrelevant. irrelevant but I have no I, more irrelevant. I just think, I think Paul, you should just carry a package of baby wipes with you just in case, <laughs> and then just you know give the nozzle a swipe. When uh, you're, Paul, when you're Paul I have a, a case of elbow. water of Evian for you here, waiting for you. Okay. Uh, All right. I'm, I'm good. Okay, thank you. Abigail, any thoughts? No objection. Kate? No objection. Dennis? I'm fine with it. Catherine? No objections. All right, is there any public, thank you all, is there any public comment on the town's desire to install a water fountain at the, the Bell Square area? And we're gonna have these folks hang on for a minute because we have another thing to do. I see no public comment hands raised so i'd look for a motion from the commission please hey, i i move we approve the application of uh, 12 main street to the town of concord for the installation of a ada compliant water fountain in bell park in the same location of a water fountain that was previously approved in 2016 to be of a, a gray color such that it uh, doesn't fade away <laughs> All right. Can I get a second there? Nia. And all in favor, Nia, I think you're a yes. Luis? Yes. Melinda? Yes. Paul? Yes. Abigail? Yes. Kate? Kate and I. Dennis? Aye. And Catherine? Aye. And I'm an I as well. All right. So, water fountain, good to go. Thank you both. Now, I'm assuming you're both now for our next application to install a bronze plaque uh, at, the, at the North Bridge at Monument Square to, in, to honor George W. Dugan. We love this group, but unfortunately it is Tish uh, who's uh, giving the presentation. Aha. Uh -huh. And Tish, th thank you. Would you mind giving us some background? I know a little bit about this, uh, this piece of our town's history, but if you could tell us a little bit more, that'd be great. Will do, yes. Hi, Tish Hopkins from the Cemetery Department in Concord. Um, George Washington Dugan was a black man living in Concord when the Civil War started. He was a farmer here in town, owned a home, owned property, was doing well. Um, his mother was Jenny Dugan, who we have a current well, uh, brook, and road named after. Um, the family was very, um, I guess, well known in town and contributed quite a bit to the farming community. Anyway, George is noted as the only man of color to go from Concord to fight in the Civil War. In 1863, when the 54th Regiment was formed, he answered the call. He was he was in Boston enlisting two two or three days after the ad was in the in the local newspapers. Um, he fought at Fort Wagner was their very first battle and mm -hmm. Due to the circum, well, he, he he very likely was killed, and his his status currently is presumed killed at Fort Wagner. Um, but because of the circumstances of his death or disappearance on that day, um, his body wasn't recovered, and there was just a mass grave where the Confederates buried the many men who died in this battle. Um, he was considered missing in action, and because he was considered missing in action until the 1930s. Um, his name wasn't added to the Civil War Memorial. You had to have either died during a battle in the Civil War or died of a sickness that you incurred during the Civil War. So he wasn't eligible for his name to be placed on the monument downtown. Um, in the 1930s, we recently learned his status was changed to presumed killed on that day. And we're, we're quite sure that he was killed on that day. Um, but we'll We'll never have physical proof of that, but want to honor him in some way. So um, short of adding his name to the existing memorial, which I still think would be 
a, a great thing to do, um, but he's, he technically does not meet the requirements to be on the memorial. We're proposing that this plaque that you see is placed, I'll say in front of, but just below the names of the other men, the, the, the names of his comrades, just below that. I don't have a Photoshopped rendering like Melissa did. <laughs> I just have cardboard, sorry, but um, would like to put this bronze plaque on an unpolished piece of gray granite as similar in color as we can get to the existing memorial and have it placed there. It would be um, 18 inches by 24 inches, the plaque itself. The granite would be two, four inches larger, so 22 inches by 28 inches. So there's a border of granite around the bronze. Um, it would measure six inches high in the front. And I think I did two feet high in the back. I didn't want to do any lower and I didn't want to do less of an angle just because personally, I, I would hate to see somebody put their foot on it. And I know that would happen. I see people sitting on this memorial and, and I also don't agree with that. <laughs> and I just would hate to see that happen. So I tried to put it at an uncomfortable angle for anything like that. All right, thank you, Tish. Uh, all right, let's just go around and see what commissioners thoughts are. Nia. Um, I think it's great that you're trying to honor this person. Um, just as out, out of curiosity, are there any other people currently that are of uncertain status in this same regard? So the monument was put here in 1866 and twice, once in 1895. I should have read this, but I was working, so I didn't have a chance to, but I, um, and once again in 1915, um, there were suggestions, names to be added, and some were denied and some were added, though, both of those times. Um, I think at this point, every name that, that could be brought forth has been vetted by the town committees. And I, I don't know of another name that anybody could bring forward for the Civil War. Um, thank you. I don't have, I don't ha have anything negative to say. Um, I'm not sure whether this is the right thing or not in terms of design. I totally agree that it, it needs to happen. I'd be interested in, in what my fellow commissioners have to say. I should add too, just, just so you know, this was approved by the select board at their meeting on February 22nd. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Nia, thank you. Uh, Luis, what do you think? I, I think that the, the, the purpose of the, of the memorial is essential and it uh, is uh, very important that the town of Concord uh, erects this memorial and, uh, and uh, remembers uh, George Washington Duggan I concur with Ania in the sense that I don't know if this is the best place uh, to put uh, uh, such uh, a, a commemoration. Uh, uh, you know, from, from a very uh, intuitive uh, perspective, it looks to me that uh, it is uh, subordinate uh, to the larger square that it's on the top. And that is something that I definitely would disagree with, even if it gives a hint that that may or may not be the case. Uh, so I would like you to see it in the same plane and in the, and in the same um, uh, area of, uh, of the main uh, uh, plaque that uh, commemorates the Concord residents uh, that passed away during the uh, Civil War. So I, I think that uh, uh, we should explore the, the option of having an additional plaque placed probably in the center of, uh, of the main plaque that has exactly the same information because you know, the other things that we may encounter in the future, uh, other uh, distinguished uh, Concord citizens that have not been recognized. So we, we, may, we should be able to find some way to add those names in a way that it's not different uh, from, from the, the main plaque. So I would redesign the plan. I would keep exactly the same information, but I would put it uh, underneath the main plaque as an addition, which is basically what it is. 
because otherwise it would have been recognized in 1869. That's all. Thank you, Luis. Melinda, what do you think? So when you mentioned before that you see people sitting on the <clears throat> block, I'm afraid that is going to become a footrest for people yeah. sitting on that block. And that could potentially wreck it. Um, I would suggest you go flat up against, like you've been suggested already, against the lower uh, block there and centered. And with a little extra room to put some other people, should that ever be the case to, you know, and be required. But um, I, I just don't see it being a long-term fixture with that slant. I, I just, I think it would get destroyed ultimately. All right, thank you, Melinda. Paul, what do you think? Um, I, I, I think some things along the lines of what Luis said, which is that I, I endorse and with enthusiasm the principle here that Mr. Dugan should be recognized. What I think is not appropriate is to make the recognition of Mr. Dugan an outsized focus of the monument because everyone on the monument sacrificed his life in, in, in the Civil War. So I think this is disproportionate to the cause. And I know that we're in an, a highly sensitive time during which we want to emphasize uh, people of color. And we want to be uh, particularly solicitous of those citizens who had less recognition over time. Uh, but at the same time, uh, all of these lives were lost. And I think this is a disproportionate recognition of Mr. Dugan. So I share the sense that it ought to be done. I disagree entirely with the design, its prominence, its uh, overtaking or overwhelming the rest of the monument. And would urge that we look for another solution to that, even if it's a plaque uh, of, of greater of the size that's suggested, but is is vertical. Uh, that is in the same plane as the plaque above, even if it's on the lower step. I'm I'm less concerned about things like people breaking it, putting their feet on it. I don't I don't think that's really the point here. Uh, what I think is the point is the importance of all the other lives as well. So I think. The recognition is crucial. I think it's important for the town. I think it's important for our community. I don't like the design. I don't like the placement. And I don't like the disproportion. All right, thank you, Paul. Uh, Dennis. I agree with the comments that it, I think it would be better if it were right underneath the plaque and in a horizontal manner. Uh, I, think it would, uh, would, I think it would work better. Other than that, I have no problem with it. Thank you, Dennis. Catherine. Um, I, I do actually look at this as, um, look at this in practical terms. And so I actually do think this could very easily become a tripping point um, for people, honestly, in terms of the design, because um, it is a little unusual and um, that angled block of granite will have some prominence. So, um, that's just to say, I also agree. I mean, I think it's it's very important. I'm very happy that this is happening and that this man is being recognized um, for his service. But I, I agree that I think it should be a plaque that is um, perhaps underneath the, the existing one um, and well proportioned below it. Thank you, Catherine. Kate. I, I agree with... Um... Uh, a lot of what my fellow commissioners have said, starting with Nia's concern about, you know, if, if we go with something like this, what if something else comes up and where would that go? But also I think it, it, it does, it, it, I, don't, I have reservations about the way it's being presented right now. Has the plaque been struck al already or is that just, um, I can't tell. Doesn't sound like it. It doesn't sound like it. Not yet. Because also there's, um, there's a comma error in it, but uh, 
just, just oh. as someone who used to work as a professional proofreader. Um, <laughs> so uh, it should either be who comma at the age of 44 comma or no comma at all after 44, who at the age of 44 enlisted in the faith because you get into different subjunctive clauses. Yep. And at a girl. Sorry. Great job, Kate. Yeah. I approve. <laughs> anyway, um, but I, you know, uh, Tish, I, I do, I, I, I would prefer to see it perhaps on a horizontal plane or vertical plane, um, you know, in, in relation to the original plaque that's there. Okay. Thank you, Kate. And Abigail. Um, so I had a question with his um, presumed change in status. Can he be added to the primary plaque? So that's the thing. He doesn't meet the criteria to be on the memorial. That was my original goal. I want to. I wanted to replace the entire plaque. It's been replaced twice already. Once in 1895 and once in 1915 to add names. Um, that was my original goal, or to put a plaque on this memorial because that's where I want his name to be. Um, he does not meet the criteria to be on the memorial. Who determined so who determined the criteria and who can update the criteria? The town of Concord. Um, set, they had war memorial committees that they set up back in 1895 and again in 1915. And then more recently, the current war memorial committee um, has followed the same protocols that they set forth back at those two times and he doesn't meet uh, the criteria yeah so my so there my has been more recent request i don't mean to interrupt but there have been more recent requests not for the civil war but for other words for the war memorial that's over closer to the where the new water fountain will go mm -hmm. there have been other requests that have been denied for these same reasons so my my strong feeling is that um he should be added to the primary plaque and that the, that the qualifications should be amended. Um, I think it's important um, both from a moral perspective and a historical perspective that he be recognized in the same class and category as his fellow townsmen who, who passed in the war. Um, I think he should be noted and honored separately um, from that as well for his contribution. I think the story is fascinating. I think it's one that's incredibly important and should be told. Um, I think for the purposes of this monument, he should be added to the primary plaque and we have a responsibility to do what we can to ensure that happens. And then this, the proposed plaque and monument could be installed in a separate location because I think it's important this town, to speak frankly, has not done a good job of honoring citizens of color, particularly citizens of color who contributed um, to our military efforts. I think it's very important. Um, I don't like um, not honoring this man in the same way that the other men have been honored. Um, so I would, I would make a strong argument that um, for moral, historical, ethical, and equitable reasons, he needs to be added to the primary plaque um, and that this plaque could be relocated to another, um, you know, kind of contiguous location um, where the story could be told in greater detail. Um, I'm not sure what has to happen for that process to start, um, but I'm willing to make a fuss about it. So I'm sure other people are too. All right, thank you. Um... Can I ask a quick question, Tish? What is on the other side? I hate to ask. What's on the other sides of this memorial? Are there? There's a date on one side, correct? Uh, yeah. Um, Carved into the stone. Have it at the town place of memorial here in 1856. I'm not quoting it correctly, but it's some uh, for those who found and conquered a birthplace, home, or grave. And then the other two sides are blank. I see, I just don't remember. I'm, I'm actually sort of wondering, I'm wondering out loud back to Luis's question, is there a place on the same plane, maybe on a different side where another large plaque could go to begin the next bit of the list or something? I don't think so. Okay. I mean, I'm personally less disturbed. I mean, I go to Boston all the time. If you walk along, 
you know, Commonwealth Avenue, there's a memorial every, you know, 20 yards to someone and it doesn't feel confusing. It's okay to have a lot of different remembrances of, of important people and, and distinguished citizens. So I, that doesn't really bother me. I think the thing that's, I think you can, if I may summarize for the commission, I think Tish, what's, what's tripping the committee up is the way that, that this monument, which is kind of very symmetrical and simple is suddenly have, it, it, it's a little bit like a barnacle being attached to the monument, which just feels kind of odd. It's not, you know what I mean? It, I, I see exactly what you're doing. I know you're trying to kind of keep it with the main plaque and avoid people putting their feet on it, but it, the, the result is a little, um, it's, it's a little disharmonious somehow. Is there a way to, to see a couple of other options for some of the suggestions we've been making a plaque in the same plane on the lower piece or? I have to, so what I'll have to do is um, via the town manager's office, I don't know if Chris Carmody stayed on, but um, I will have to go back to the select board and they will have to decide that. They're acting as, there, there is no current war memorial committee because there isn't any war memorial being built. Um, uh, Tish? And I know Jane is on the yeah. phone here. I was gonna oh, say, hi, Tish, Jane. hello. Okay. Um, you have a few here. weeks. You have a few weeks in which I, while I will still be on the select board. Okay. So All right. if you want to get it on the on an agenda, I will, um, I will strongly push to form a, um, a war memorial committee for the 21st century that is more uh, inclusive, you know, that, that captures the changes in understanding and knowledge that have evolved. I have, Which, I have all of that information. I have all of the information from the other two war, war memorial committees and the current one. Okay, let me see what I can do with Linda, um, our chair. Okay. And, and when we can get you on the agenda. And Abigail, was that you that spoke last or was it Kate? Abigail. It was me. Okay. Yeah, Abigail, if you wanted to speak when we get it on that agenda, that would be very helpful. Yes, I'd be I'd be happy to. I have a military family and um, relatives that passed in the Civil War as well, so I I probably feel strongly about it more than most commission members do. So happy to. Well, I'm, and and I have a Revolutionary War musket somewhere in my family, so I'm with you on this. There we so go. So the um, I'm happy to to make this one of my parting shots. Ooh, that was a very bad pun. As Sorry. it were. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Jane. Yeah. Um, well, I guess what I'm uh, what I'm sort of hearing is we may just um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, everyone? Uh, what's that? Continue the application. Yeah, I was going to say kick the, kick the can down the road. <laughs> That's the wrong way to say it. Yes, Louise. Okay. I I want to to echo all the principles that uh, Abigail uh, mentioned. But, but I have a slightly different take on the issue. I think that if we add Mr. Dugan's name to the current plaque, that is going to deny the fact that, that uh, even if Mr. Dugan had compiled, complied with all the requirements to be included in the plaque, he most likely would not have been included uh, because he was black. You see, and, and that's a history that we cannot collectively ignore. And the fact that we just add his name as if nothing ever happened here, it fails to recognize uh, not only the personal sacrifice that uh, our fellow citizens of, uh, of, uh, of African ancestry made in, in behalf of all of us, but, but also denies that recognition. You see, it, it, I, I don't believe that, that, that you just can say that he's just one of us because he wasn't. Uh, so from, from using that principle, I believe that uh, Mr. Dugan should be in the same plane of the main plaque, but he should have his own plaque. And that plaque will remind us of a, of a wrong that we have worked very, very hard uh, to right but uh, that, that we just can't ignore. So I, I feel very strongly that he should have a very prominent plaque uh, that adds him to the name of the current uh, uh, plaque and that uh, recognizes that, that in fact he was uh, in spirit 
uh, as patriot and as committed to all of us as we were, but he was not included. And that's a fact of life. Thank you, Luis. I will note to the commission that if you don't know already, the League of Women Voters is petitioning the select board to form a diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, commission in Concord. And I, I'm not exactly sure where that stands. I know our church has been approached um, to endorse that idea. So, so there's there's movement afoot to to do some um, more. We had it at the last select board meeting and mm -hmm. and heartily heartily supported it. Okay. Well, let me see if there's, um, I, I, I know this is always an exciting moment to open this kind of thing up to public comment, but why don't I open this up? Uh, it sounds like we are gonna continue it, but do folks have thoughts uh, on the uh, bronze plaque to honor George Dugan uh, by the town in Monument Square? Just uh, if there's any public comment, we'd entertain that now. I'm just looking through the list. Okay, I don't see any additional public comment. Heather, anybody I'm missing? All right, well, why don't I bring it back to the commission and uh, look for a motion. Uh, I move we continue the application of the town of Concord uh, for uh, the installation of a bronze plaque to honor uh, George W. Duggan in the Monument uh, Square. And do we continue this how long indefinitely or we need to continue it to a specific meeting so the next select board meeting is when jane well, i mean i guess it's every um they're every monday <laughs> every monday well i'm wondering how uh, yeah that's true i'm i'm just wondering how long we should continue this for um well um jane, in terms I, of I... resolution I don't think we're going to be able to do that probably before town meeting. Is that you, Chris Carmody? Sorry. Yeah. So I think the uh, agenda already posted for the seventh, for the 24th, and then the next weekend is Memorial Day. So I don't know if the select board's meeting on the 31st. But yeah, as a reminder, uh, town meeting's on June 13th. Right. So I think I would rather have um, greater attention paid to this than not. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, I won't be able to kick that can. Um, or fire that shot um, if it's after town meeting. So it sounds like the hearing should be maybe the hearing before town meeting if you can get it on the agenda. Mm -hmm. And then we'll continue it. Um, I mean, it would be it would probably be Tish some time to do a new design or proposal and that might take a few weeks so we could continue it. Uh, is there a is there a deadline on this? Is there like a grant or anything that we're we're waiting. Okay, so the, so there's no no particular. I mean, the urgency is more. We'd like to do it, not we're waiting for a grant to be funded or something. Correct. Um, well, I suggest we postpone at least a month. Uh, or uh, sorry, um, why do I forget this word tonight? Um, what's the <laughs> word? I'm, yes, that. Continue. Continue. Uh, maybe six weeks. What do you think? And then if, if it's not ready, we can always continue it just by the administrative motion. Okay. Yeah. So six weeks would be about, I don't know what our meeting, I'm not looking at the calendar. What date would that be? Sorry, Luis, I'm It'll interrupting early, your motion. Early July. July 1st. July 1st. Okay, so why don't we say to July 1st, would that be a friendly amendment to your motion? Yeah, absolutely. We'll continue to July 1st. We'll, we'll okay, continue and then I, to the July 1st meeting. Okay, I just need a second there. Paul second. All right, all in favor, Nia? Aye. Yeah, Luis made the motion. I assume you're an aye. Melinda? Aye. Paul? Aye. Abigail? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Dennis? Aye. Kate? Kate's an aye, and I'm an aye as well. Uh, Tish, thank you. This is a, a fascinating project and um, we'll hope to have some more discussion and dialogue on it. So we'll probably see you again in July, <clears throat> but thank you for the presentation. We appreciate your work. Thank you. Thank you for your interest and good comments. I, I agree wholeheartedly. So whatever we can do for him, I think is great. Okay, great.
All right. Again, thanks. thank you. And Jane, thank you for your input there. Yeah, Jane, thank you. I'll find you. <laughs> she knows where you live. <laughs> All right. Unfortunately, guys, I will be a resident of Carlisle by then. So you'll have to import. Uh, uh. Not that far yeah. away. What? Where? Yeah. Actually, uh, I will be closer Jane, to I will be closer to Concord Center. Speaking of Jenny Dugan, Jane wanted a deck house, but but couldn't. I think Paul talked her out of it. I'm just kidding. Oh, come on. <laughs> all right, thank you all. Uh, let's keep going if we could um, to our next application. This is 255 Main Street um, to repaint a house, trim shutters, alter and replace some windows, and replace lighting, porch decking, and stairs. And our friends from the Shadok Architects are here tonight. Welcome back. Oh. How are you all doing tonight? We're, we're very well, thank you. And um, if you wouldn't mind just walking us through the application, we'd appreciate it. Sure. So um, as you know, we already came to do some renovations to the house. Most of what we were doing was on the back side of the house. Uh, but now that construction started, there's some things that have come up that um, they would like to address. Um, one was the front steps are, um, very steep and one is like completely like two or three inches taller than the other one. So um, we are doing a landscaping plan and we would like to request that that two, there's actually just one, um, one tread that's there. Um, we would ask to install two treads um, so that we have six inch risers um, up to the wood deck. Um, and we'd like to do that in, um, in granite. So um, you can kind of see that there's a concrete um, pad or something happening there. And then that one um, lower wood tread is not in great shape. Um, and the other thing you would like to do with the um, deck there is you're going to try and replace it with Ipe um, just so that it um, weathers nicely and um, it'll turn kind of a silvery gray. The other thing is, I don't know if you can really see it, but um, on the light um, underneath the portico there, um, it's actually just kind of um, a recessed down light that's in bad shape and there's just like an exposed bulb there right now. So we would like to try and put a um, more um, simpler um, light and it'll be a surface mount light, but it's kind of up underneath so you, you won't get to um, see it all that much. Um, we can talk about the lighting later because there's some more lighting on the on the back side. So that's pretty much everything that we wanted to do on the front. Okay. Um, I think we can see that light fixture on the next sheet. Yeah. <coughs> so uh, more. Um, this is the side view kind of what we can see walking down the street. I think I might've put a couple more photos in there just to try and show you how, how much you can actually see. I was trying to take pictures of all the things that we would like to um, adjust. Um, so really um, we are doing some new windows in the space on the back side of the house. So there's, um, let me see, is it possible that I can, um, Take over your mouse, Heather. Can you do that? Does it give you the ability? Yeah. Yeah, you can go ahead and do that. Okay. Um, can you guys can't see that? Um, I think you have to. Uh, you have to request remote control. Okay, there it is. So I just have to do that for you. And you have to okay it. All right. Can everybody see my cursor move? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's, um, there's three windows back in here and you can kind of see um, two of them here. Um, there's, um, you can also see them in this picture. So there's two windows on the upper story um, and this lower window here. Um, they're not in great shape and we're, the rooms that are being redone are all getting new windows on the other three sides. So we would like to request to do the similar windows that um, were approved previously, which was um, clad sash wood frame um, with the black um, sashes and um, mutton bars. And um, this window in particular, um, 
what's happening in the room. There's some tray ceiling and some coffers and things like that. And because of the, um, the height of those, um, these are really close to the ceiling. So we wanted to move this window down six inches. Um, and the one- Lisa, other... sorry to interrupt. I can't see your cursor. Oh, you but... can't. Um, I don't know. Okay. I don't know if I can see it either. Okay, I don't, I don't. No, nobody can. Oh, there, no. now I can there see it. There it is. Oh, there is. did I just get it? Yep, yep. there it is. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. No, that's okay. I just so, I couldn't. So these, there. these are the windows in yep. particular mm -hmm. that we're talking about. And these are the two in the bedroom upstairs. Um, and then this is the window that we would like to lower um, and replace. So it's really these three windows um, in the main house. And this window, as we started construction, we really noticed that it's all kind of rotting down here in the corner. So we would like to just kind of replace that same size, um, everything else. And then um, if we go to the next slide, oh, I guess I can move it myself. Um, there you go. So these Thanks. are the current light fixtures. Um, this one happens at um, next to that rotting window that I just showed you. Um, right here. And then these two are um, right next to the garage door on either side. And then this was a better photograph of what's there for a light fixture right now. So um, just let me get back to- Have we carefully removed the wildlife in that light fixture to the right? Yeah, no, that, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. yes. that, that wildlife needs to be respected. And yes, be yes, respected. absolutely. Yeah, so I think I had a better, okay, so that, here's the picture here, shows kind mm -hmm. of the three lights that we would like to replace okay, um, so that's a render. on the garage. And so um, we're proposing to um, do some urban electric lights. We um, want to do seated glass for all of these. Um, I have to tell you, unless you guys have some recommendations, we have looked everywhere for dark sky fixtures that are lantern-like and it's really difficult to find. Um, so um, they would prefer not to do the um, frosted glass. They're happy to do the seated glass, um, but they were really trying to do something more traditional looking. Um, and so this is the smaller one that would go next to the people door and then we would get two of these um one for either side of the garage door to replace what's there um they would have two 60 watt max candelabra bulbs here one 60 watt max bulb and the people door and then this would have two 60 watt max bulbs in the um front foyer um entry there um, and they would like to do the black and copper brown finish, so it'll be something dark like this. Um, the other item that they would like to do is to repaint the house. Um, you know, the, it is in need of paint, and these are pretty much the same colors that are already on the house. There's, the yellow is slightly lighter. Um, the white is white, white, and so this just has a little bit of yellow into it to make it a little softer. And um, the excess green is just um, kind of a deeper, richer color of green because right now it's um, a pretty um, uh, light yellowy green. So this is more of a blue green. I can show you. Can this see what's on the front of the house there? So. Um, so pretty much, I believe that's everything. These were the, the windows that we had showed you before. Um, this is the APA decking. And um, this was the idea of the two um, granite lower steps that we would like to put in. And this was incorporated in the landscapers plan. Right, Lisa, do you know if Concord Ivory is, is named after something in Concord, Mass or Concord, New Hampshire? I, I didn't you realize know, that was a historic color. Yeah, um, it is. Yeah, they're all in, in the historic. I guess the ivy white um, isn't necessarily, but um, I don't know if it's named after. I'm, I'm assuming it's, it's Concord, it's Massachusetts. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. if anybody wants to start a seated glass uh, lantern light fixture company, I think um, it's a very small side business opportunity that's been presented tonight. Um, mm. All right, so I think I understand this is, uh, it's really, it's mostly the biggest thing is the repainting. Yep. Uh, some trim, 
uh, shutter, altar, uh, uh, window, lighting, decking, and stairs. All right, let's go around and see if folks have questions. Uh, Nia, can I pick on you first, please? May I, I should say? She was paying her electric bill. That's okay. I'm not concerned about the windows. It looks to me like those are pretty much not very visible from the um, public way. Um, I'm fine with the light underneath the, the front door um, overhang. I'm fine with the decking, fine with the granite slabs. Um, you know, I'm always a stickler over the lights um, by the garage, both lanterns each having, remind me, was it each having two 60 watt bulbs? Max, yeah. Max. Um, I would um, lobby for the seated glass. I don't think frosted is necessary, but I'm always going to lobby for seated. Um, and I'd prefer the wattage to be lower, but I'm happy to go along with the other commissioners if they think that this is okay. Thank you, Nia. Luis. I, I have no comments. I think that uh, everything is fine. Okay, thank you. Melinda. I agree with Luis. I think it's fine. Thank you, ma'am. Paul. No, I, I don't have any comments. I I like the lantern with the two candle like lights in it, but that may be more than than the uh, the lumen traffic will bear here. But I think it's a very attractive um, fixture and would weather beautifully. Um, other than that, I have no particular problem. Certainly with the second riser, with the windows, with the paint color, I'm, I'm good with all of that. I like that lantern, I must say, the brass or whatever it is. To the left Copper. there. Okay, the thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Abigail. Um, well, it sounds like the homeowner's preference is seated glass. Is that correct? Um, they, I, I kind of told them that you guys prefer the seated glass <laughs> over. That was their preference because it was our preference. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I said, you know, like we would really like to not do frosted and they're not, they're not excited about frosted at all. And I said, you know, we've done seated glass before and we've yeah. got that past. So no. you know. I, I don't think the frosted is appropriate. I think it makes the fixtures look too modern. Yeah. Um, so my only I, I don't have any objection to any of the changes. My only request would be that the that the fixtures have seated glass. Okay. Um, and I think that's a that's a compromise, and I think mm -hmm. that will um, address some of the concerns about mm -hmm. um, light spillage. So that's that's my only comment. Okay. Thank you, Abby. Kate, any thoughts? No, I support the application. I think nothing to object to. Okay. Thank you, Kate Dennis. Um, I just wanted to hear again. Why are you changing the dimension of two of the windows? What's the reason behind that? Oh, the um, actually the two on the upper story are not changing dimensions. Um, it's only the one on the lower story and it's not changing the dimension itself. It's just moving down six inches. And why are you moving it down? We're doing some work on the interior and having some tray ceilings. Um, those windows are like at, at eight feet and there's only like nine feet. So we were gonna try and do some trim details on the inside ceiling. And so it, it pushes the, um, the it, we wouldn't get any trim above the windows if we didn't move it down. Yeah, it's a pretty historic house. So I'm not gung ho on that, but I would go along with it. Other than that, I have no comments. Yeah, this, this portion of the house is not original. This was added in the 1980s. Okay, thank you. And I would note, Dennis, that it's pretty far. I'm not even sure it's entirely visible from the public way. That window. Right, Nia, Nia said that. She didn't think it was. I saw okay. the question anyway. Okay, thank you. And Catherine, any thoughts? Um, I think all the choices that have been made um, for the improvements and the painting are great. I have no objections. Um, I will note that I think there are three good very good lighting companies. We might find exactly what we're looking for um, in terms of dark sky compliant uh, lights in the in the correct style with the seated glass. Um, I, I'm happy to provide some links. Thank you, Catherine. 
Uh, I'm getting an echo for some reason there, Heather. Me too. I don't know why. Maybe if folks wouldn't mind muting themselves, just in case we're getting some sunspots or something feedback. All right. I think I've heard from all commissioners. So why don't we open it up? Is there any public comment on the application for modifications to the original application at 255 Main Street? Um, looking around the room here. I see Stefan Bader has a question. Stefan, welcome. Uh, welcome. Thank you, Peter and commissioners. Um, I agree with uh, Nia, and I would hope that something like two times 40 watt maximum still gives you 80 watts. That's a lot of lighting on either side of the garage. That's a, 160 watts. You know, do we really need 240 watts? Um, just I'm agreeing with Nia on that front. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, there are other public comments. I'm looking around, I'm looking for raised hands. I don't see any. All right, I'll bring it back to the commission and look for a motion, please. Um, I move that uh, we approve the application of 255 Main Street and the Shutter Architects for the paint the house with comfort highway shutters and doors. Essex green trim, ivory white, a porch alterations, a replacing a light in the underside of the porch, a decking and two steps, garage alterations, replacing one window and three lights, and the left uh, facade, replacing three existing windows and reduce the height of the first floor window. And uh, the applicant uh, will make every effort uh, to keep uh, uh, the wattage of uh, each light fixture to be below uh, 60 watts combined, but this is not binding. Can okay, thank that? you. Give a second on that, please. Uh, Melinda, second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, let me go around and see how people vote. All in favor, Nia? Aye. Luis? Aye. Melinda? Aye. Paul? Aye. Abigail? Aye. Kate? Aye. Dennis? Aye. Dennis is an aye. And Catherine? Catherine's an aye, and I'm an aye as well. So it's a unanimous aye. Lisa, thank you. Uh, we'll look forward to the uh, seeing it all installed. And um, so good luck getting it all done. Thank you. Have a good right. night. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. You too. All right. Continuing right along, uh, we have the Concord Free Public Library Corporation. This is the Fowler branch. Now, everybody, don't get too excited. It's just the Fowler branch. <laughs> 1322 Main Street. This is the Church Street Historic District, and this is a fencing application. Uh, all right. And who's here from the library? Jeff. Uh, Jeff's diet. Die Climbers here. Sherry, I see Sherry's here. Welcome, folks. Hi, uh, Peter. Who, who would like to present and uh, walk us through the application? Hi, Peter. It's Jeff. I'll start Hi, Jeff. by All introducing right. Di, um, who will talk a little bit about why the application for fencing has been submitted. And then I'll talk a little bit more in detail about the type of fencing. So. Di Clymer, who's a trustee with a library. Okay, hang on just a sec, Di. Dennis, did you have, you were waving at me. I can't hear you. Unmute you yourself. Hear? Sorry, I thought there I was unmuted. I sit on a committee of the library, so I think I should recuse myself. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, hi, Di, welcome. Hi, Peter. I wanted just to sort of set the stage for this. Uh, perhaps you have uh, known that we have been eager to develop at Fowler, an outdoor area for pr children's programming. And um, the area needs to be safe and inviting. Uh, we started doing a little bit of fencing earlier. Um, and the fence that we are concluding with uh, now goes, will go right around the area so that the children will be able to be secure inside um, this children's programming area. So the fencing will keep them safe from the 
parking lot that's right, our parking lot right there, and the two busy streets of Main Street and Church Street. Thanks, Di. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, this is Jeff again. So I'll take over okay. a little bit about where the fencing is proposed. Mm -hmm. On the right side of the property is the current parking area. And Heather can use her cursor to draw the back of the library, which is right through the middle. That's the back wall of the library. If you were to go down to the very bottom of the page, that would be the front of the library and Main Street. So there's currently six foot tall fencing for most of the background of the library. The entire left side where the cursor is now is six foot tall fence and moving to the right, boy, you're doing great. That's existing six foot fence. And then when we get to the end of the red mark where it suggested new fence, right at that point going across to the parking lot is also six foot fence currently exists. So as Di suggested for the programming for younger kids, we'd like to cloister the back area to um, keep folks from wandering away and whatnot. So there are three areas of fencing proposed right in the middle of the drawing. And I'll come back to that in a moment. On the right side, adjacent to the parking lot, that'll be a small picket fence. And on the left side, is again a small picket fence. And to get a better understanding of these areas, perhaps we can look at some of the photos. So this is looking down, if you could go to the left side of the library as viewed from Main Street, this is to the left of the addition that was built a number of years ago. And it's a small picket fence to close in that back corner that we're recommending. Next slide. And this is the, looking behind the library at the existing conditions. So there's a yellow house on the right that's directly on the property line. And looking carefully at this picture, to the left of the yellow house, you'll see a black line. That's actually the property line. And that's where we're suggesting continuing the six foot fence between the fence that exists on the left side and it will connect with a fence that's on the right side. And if you look at this picture, that's the fence on the right side. Next photo. This is again, the back of that fence that shows the property line right at the back of that bulkhead. And it shows the six foot cent fence existing on the right side that goes down adjacent to the parking area. Next slide, please. This was, um, as we submitted, it's a little difficult to try to draw the fence, but that line was intended to be a connection of the two six foot fence areas that exist behind the library. Behind that gray building, you can see there's a six foot fence on library property. And a moment ago on the last slide, we looked at the fence on the right side, which is adjacent to the parking area. Now in a few moments, will show a revision to the slide that suggests that the fence behind the yellow building will be only five feet tall instead of six feet tall. Next slide. This is that gate on the path that leads from the um, parking area into the area behind the library. And we'd like again to have a shorter picket fence that's a little more open and welcoming to the area for programming behind the library. Next slide, please. This is the style of the picket fence we're proposing at um, that area from the parking lot and at the far end. Next slide. That's the estimate. We can probably skip that. <laughs> and the application. Um, Heather, uh, we submitted a, another picture today. Perfect, thank you. So. This is a revision and in conversation with the folks who live in the yellow house, they asked that we change the proposed six foot tall fence right directly behind their house to be only five feet tall. So on the left, you'll see there's a section that extends the existing fence behind the library that will be six feet. When it reaches the house, we'd like to now request that we drop it down to five feet. 
And I'll offer a little more detail about how this fence will work. You'll see if you look carefully, there are two gates. For the folks to be able to enter their bulkhead, we need to provide access through our fence because the house was built exactly on the property line. Mm. So there'll, there'll be a gate um, that's narrower. It's on the right side, just a little bit more right there. That's um, a gate that's at the base of a couple of steps of an elevated platform on the right side of their house. So the folks, and they rarely enter the basement, but if they chose to, they would descend those steps, open the gate, and go through a double gate that provides access to their basement. So the primary difference in our application and the change that we're requesting is for this section to be a little bit shorter than we proposed and shorter than the adjacent fences that surround the perimeter of the library so that it's uh, less intrusive onto their property. And they're very appreciative of that change and we hope the commission will agree. So All that's right, thank you. Thank you, Jeff and Don. Thank you. For any questions. All right. Um, let me just go around. Uh, Nia. Oh, you, there you go. Um, I have no problem with this application at all. Okay, thank you, Nia. Luis. I have no objections to the application. Thank you, sir. Melinda. I think it's a great idea and I have no, no reservations at all. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Paul? No comments. Thank you, sir. Abigail? No objections. Thank you, Kate? No objections. Thank you, ma'am. Catherine? No objections either. And last but not least, Dennis? Recused. Oh, Dennis recused himself, right? Sorry, I forgot. Uh, all right, uh, I don't see any uh, comments from the commission. It sounds like you've talked to the neighbors, so uh, that there's a, is... There's a comment. Mr. Baker, no, Mr. Baker, it's... Uh... Yeah, no, I haven't opened it up to public comment yet. So, hey, no, it's okay. Uh, so let's, let's, let's do that thing. Let's open it up to public comment, so... Uh, Stefan, I see you and uh, uh, please go ahead. Thank you, Stefan Vader, Seven River Street. I hate to be the uh, bearer of a different uh, history, but the um, fence that exists at six feet was put in a number of years ago and came to your uh, board for approval at that time. And at that time, the homeowner in the yellow house, who's an elderly woman with a handicapped son that she's taking care of there um, requested and you granted and the library corporation agreed to not put a fence right up against her house. Now I understand that you are putting multiple gates in there to allow access but um, and I understand that you have a right to build a fence on the property line and that you are conceding a five foot section instead of a six foot section in that area. But uh, she would rather be happy with no fence or short of no fence, a three or four foot fence. If the objective is to keep children from running out, I think four feet probably does it. I haven't seen too many six year olds run into the street after climbing a four foot fence. So um, you're, you're all well within your rights. There's no question about that and there's no question that if the historic districts uh, commission approves it you can go ahead but the other solution or the other resolution of the access issues would be not to put the fence on the property line but move the fence a foot or a foot and a half in to the back of the library and it would be a little notch out of that section but you could still put a fence in and they would still be able to have access without the fence right as they trip out there back stairs or their basement uh, access door. So I spoke to the owner uh, recently and um, she did not elect to come before the commission, but uh, she did be go before the commission the last time that this was before the commission. And uh, so I'm volunteering to just express her concerns so that you're aware of that part of the story. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. 
Uh, is there other public comment? I'm just looking around the room. I, don't, I see Mario, you've got your hand raised. Yes, please go ahead. You have to unmute yourself though. And just say your name for the record there, sir. Uh, Mario Favorito, I'm a f uh, former trustee, now trustee emeritus of the library. Uh, I've been having correspondence back and forth uh, with, um, I guess, Margaret, uh, who uh, has voiced objections in, in the past and suggested to her, because her primary concern, as it was expressed to me, was that uh, she didn't want to have light uh, blocked by the fence to that window on the left. And so I suggested to her that we lower the fence to five feet, uh, which, which we've done. Uh, and in correspondence back and forth, emails back and forth, that seemed to satisfy her, but I haven't spoken to her Personally, I've just traded emails. Uh, and so this design seems to have uh, satisfied her. Although I do agree uh, that uh, if we didn't have this issue of the children and, and, and the concerns about safety that she has uh, was previously expressed would prefer no offense. Uh, but uh, we have had uh, correspondence back and forth, traded designs uh, etc. Okay, thank you, Mario. Uh, other public comments? Heather, I'm looking around the room. I don't see any raised hands. All right, let me bring it back to the commission. Um, maybe, I, could I just offer, my only question is, does it have to be a, a, a solid fence? Um, a stockade fence. Is that a potential compromise to make the fence less um, sort of monolithic? I, and I'm mostly thinking now about the creation of a, of a darkish alley. Um, is that something that the, the board considered, Jeff? Maybe I could yeah. ask you. Oh, that's, that's a great question, Peter. Thank you for that. As you're all aware, the space behind the library is really quite narrow. Um, but we're trying to open opportunities for programming, particularly for kids in the back area. And we did look at a design of placing the fence on the property, but um, to allow more space for her to enter her basement. But it really needs to be four or five feet away from the property line to have a meaningful area. So as Mario indicated, we've shown her designs, the adjacent owner, that would give her an easement and access to her basement, an area that she's indicated she rarely uses. Um, and recently I've seen communication from her thanking us for the changes that we proposed. The five foot fence, which will be consistent with the fencing on the left and the right, um, is something that she said she was grateful for. Um, and I think I had prayed for instead of a six foot fence. So. We feel that is a logical alteration that will create a consistent area. Um, a picket fence um, with spacing in between adjacent to the property would, I, I'm not sure aesthetically would be practical. We do like the short picket fences at the gate entrance area and will accomplish the goal of cloistering the space for kids. I'd just like to add that- Go ahead, uh, Di that uh, the proposed uh, lower fence that we are suggesting there, I think will be a very attractive background for what we have in front of it, which is the seed garden. And um, I think if we had a picket, the picket fence is meant to be um, sort of an attractive entry, but the rest of the fencing is supposed to look like just the background and for, for that whole area. Righto, okay. Um, well, uh, folks, I'm just gonna bring it back to the commission. You've heard the comments, any further thoughts? I'm just gonna look for you to sort of wave at me. I don't really need to go around. 
Mia and then Paul. Um, Jeff, can I just ask, um, can you confirm that the five foot section of fence will in fact uh, clear that bottom ledge of uh, the window that she, your neighbor is con concerned about? Yeah, I measured it. It goes, um, the it's a little difficult to determine exactly how the panels of the fence will be installed, but her window sill above the grade is between four and a half feet and five feet. It's kind of a, it, it goes at an angle under that space. Um, and the five foot window, the five foot fence has sort of pickets at the uh, angled points at the top of a stockade fence. So it doesn't technically cover her view looking out, but our goal would be not to, and, and the change from five to six, from six feet to five feet was intended not to block her view out that window. Okay. The glass is actually closer to five feet tall. Thank you. Daylight view. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Nia. Paul, do you have a, a comment? Yeah, uh, another question for Jeff. Um, Jeff, remind me of the dimensions of, of the area that's being fenced. That is to say, from her house to the library, the working area that you're trying to accommodate for children, What what is the size of that? And I'm thinking in particular of whether it is possible to give her a bit of a notch around that bulkhead, recognizing that that's awkward, doesn't look good, gives two sharp corners for the kids to bang into. But um, say something about the dimensions just to remind me. Yeah, that's a great question, Paul. And I'm trying to open up the plans right now to see if there's a dimension on that. Um, it's it's about it's about 23 feet from the property line to the back of the building but right yeah. in the area and it may show on this design are the steps so the distance from the building you can actually see it on this plan is about 23.3 feet but the stairs take out about five feet that's an emergency egress area so that brings it down to about 18 feet, which is fairly narrow in that area. If we came in five feet from her property line onto the library, that would reduce it to 13 feet, which is really a pretty small area because it also includes the, um, the seed lending library garden. So that, that, doesn't, that really doesn't leave programming space, unfortunately. So she's agreeable to the strategy that gives her a gate and allows her to enter library property when she would like to go to the basement for any reason, as she had, has admitted, she almost never goes down there, but there are services down there um, that folks may want to address and so on. So everybody seems to agree, including the adjacent neighbor, that this is a good strategy to provide her access. Okay, I, I understand that answers my question. And I, I do agree that if you took five feet, it would be unworkable space, um, at least in my view. But. I, uh, I just make one uh, comment. Uh, as I said earlier, mm -hmm. the, the, the back and forth with uh, Joey has been via emails back uh, and I haven't actually spoken with her as I, uh, uh, but the main concern seemed to be the uh, sunlight in the back uh, of, of the house to the window that Jeff was just talking about. But uh, at the end of the day, she, you know, obviously she would prefer no fence, but we have a program that we're trying to implement for the children. Thank you, Mario. <clears throat> All right, I think we have seen, uh, and I think you've answered, I'm looking at the commissioners, I think we've answered all of your concerns and questions. So I would look for a motion from the commission, please. I move that we approve the application for, sorry, excuse me. Um, 1322. Or excuse me, for 1322 Main Street to install fencing um, as amended to include a five foot section in front of the uh, neighbor's yellow house as submitted. Second. Yeah, can I get a second? Luis, second. Okay, let me go around. Uh, Nia. Aye. Luis? 
Hi. Hi. Melinda. Melinda. Paul. Hi. Abigail. Hi. Catherine. Hi. Dennis. Uh, Dennis recused himself. God, I am so sorry. I'm spacing out. Kate. Aye. And I am an I as well. So uh, thank you. You are good to go with the fence. And let's uh, let's hope it can get done before fencing runs out of. It sounds like we're short on fencing contractors in town. So it might pass Perfect. your your uh, your estimate onto the first applicant this evening. Okay, thank you, folks. Um, I think we are all set. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and now we are moving on to uh, 88 Monument Street is our next application. This is a in the Northbridge Monument Square District to replace garage doors to convert an existing screen porch to a solarium, convert an existing terrace to a screen terrace, and to replace some windows. Uh, this is, I, I'm gonna pronounce it incorrectly, I bet Heisel Flynn Architects, did I do say that right? That is correct. Thank you. <clears throat> Sheldon, I see you're here. Are you here from the architect's office? I am, yes, and Dan okay. Heisel is also in the background. Welcome. Um, would you mind walking us through this application, please? I, I know we've looked at it online, but uh, we'd love to get your um, narrative, please. Absolutely. I was wondering if I might be able to share my screen. Uh, I've actually reordered the slides for clarity. I don't know if that's possible. Yeah, that's fine. Great, thank you. Give us a moment here. Great. All right. Everyone see that? Yes. Great. So um, just walk everyone through it quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so this is an existing dwelling uh, on Monument Street, a single family residence built in 1990. So it is not a historic structure, um, but it is in the Northbridge Monument Square Historic District. Um, and we'll walk through in the drawings uh, the proposition uh, just as they were listed now. Um, but I think what's very important to emphasize also is that um, the owner is proposing no increase in the structural coverage of the site uh, and no removal of, of uh, existing trees on the site either. So we are looking to stay within the footprint of um, the existing dwelling. Um, but we want to be respectful of the fact that the existing architecture is, um, you know, respectful of the historic district, and we are looking to enhance that um, as well. Uh, so these are photos of the existing um, dwelling, um, as seen from the property itself. Uh, you can see from the plot plan that the house is set back quite far from Monument Street. Um, so it's not terribly visible from there. Um, it does uh, abut the cemetery though, um, but you'll see from the photos as well that it is difficult to see a lot of the house because of um, the vegetation along the cemetery. So these are the views um, from the cemetery currently. Uh, well, actually the, these are winter shots. So this is when it would be most exposed. Um, and for the most part, this is the most um, exposed that you might see the house from the cemetery. And from Monument Street, um, the house is actually situated right back here, um, but it is difficult to see from the street. Gotcha. So we are proposing the um, existing um, screen porch be converted uh, into a conditioned space. Um, so we would actually be removing uh, what would be considered the exterior wall um, from here, uh, but we would retain the existing structure. Uh, and we would also remove the screens from between uh, the uh, columns of the screen porch. 
but we would maintain the structure and the roof of that porch to become the solarium eventually. Um, and you'll see that in the elevations more clearly. So we would actually glaze this entire area around the solarium and, and uh, we would allow the, this open area to become part of the kitchen area. And for the terrace on the lower floor, uh, we would propose that the current opening uh, open terrace uh, would become a screened terrace um, with phantom um, screens, which retract into uh, the ceiling and uh, can be you know, made invisible as well. Uh, and then for the garage, we're proposing that uh, new doors be installed because the existing ones are starting to fail. Uh, and we were also proposing at the family room to replace the windows there because they are failing as well. And currently they're casement windows, but we're looking to match them more um, appropriately to the rest of the house and make them double hung. So you can see we're retaining the roof structure of that current screen porch and the roof structure over the terrace would also remain unchanged. And then the only other change we are proposing uh, for the second floor uh, is converting a double hung window at the primary bathroom um, to become a clear story window in the bathroom for greater privacy. And so you'll be able to see on the elevations a little more clearly what we're proposing. Um, so this is the uh, conversion from the screen porch to the solarium, uh, the conversion of the uh, colonnaded terrace um, into a screen terrace and converting that window to a clear story window. And on the new facade, you'll see that we are actually bulking up the columns here to accommodate those retractable screens. And we think it adds a better proportion to that terrace area as well. Um, we are retaining the verticals from that original screen porch and recreating those as sliding doors um, at the new solarium area. And we are also borrowing uh, the window uh, under the fan light at the attic um, to duplicate that and become the uh, clear story window in the um, primary bathroom. And then moving back to the south elevation. So this is the full um, screen porch as it appears originally and um, these swinging barn doors that we're looking to replace because they are not uh, operational or optimally op operational currently. And then replacing those screens with um, glazed sliding doors. And we would propose currently these, um, these screens are bounded by uh, mahogany um, mullions and we are looking to use the same materials for these doors as well. So maintaining that. We are also looking to um, berm up slightly to the new solarium so that when these doors open, we are within building code um, and we just have a six inch step down and rebuilding the steps at either side of the solarium as well um, with uh, a granite paver um, to allow going down to the grade. Uh, the west elevation is minimally impacted, um, which is the one that you see mostly from the cemetery. Uh, and you can see here that the porch is, is visible um, and will be converted uh, as discussed. And then uh, looking at the north elevation, so we have the colonnade of the covered terrace here that will be converted uh, with the, the retractable screens and the existing garage doors, which are currently a pretty um, plain flat front, um, will be replaced with carriage doors, carriage style doors over here. And again, bulking up the columns from this angle um, with the arches to conceal the retractable screens. Um, so you could see the perspectives here and how, you know, the two elevations change. And we just wanted to emphasize the, um, the column at the screen terrace. We know this is a, a bit of an addition. So we are looking 
to, so the original column is simply, um, you know, this structure right here. We are looking to retain the original columns with their bases and then build around them um, so that that retractable screen could run between uh, these two, uh, um, you know, built out areas here. We're looking to put a pilaster on the rear of that structure so that we can carry through the original architectural intention. And I know this might be a, a point of discussion, but we're looking to put up lights um, in uh, the pavement uh, to illuminate these columns and to illuminate the ceiling of um, this covered terrace. So the up light would not um, illuminate the sky. So it would not be illuminating into the open air. It would be um, concealed by both the column and by the ceiling above of the covered terrace. Um, and I don't know if you wanna walk through the specifications in this presentation. I know that you guys have them on file, mm -hmm. but we can take questions from here if you like. Okay, no, thank you, Sheldon, I appreciate it. And thank you for the presentation. So uh, not to uh, cut it too fine, but I'm not sure how much of this we can see from the public way. That's really all we have sort of purview over. I, I understand, not that I wouldn't love to tour this property, frankly, it would be fascinating to get a tour, but I don't know how much we can actually see. We, it looks like we can see a little bit from the cemetery, uh, but I'm not sure that part of the house is being touched, is it? Well, you will, you will be able to see um, a small amount of the uh, screened porch um, become right. the solarium. But as you can see, it is pretty screened here. And you'd really have to make an effort to find an opening in the foliage here to, uh, to take a, a good look at it. Um, and as I said, you know, that west facade is really the one that that is the majority facing the cemetery. Some of the south facade does as well, um, as you can see here, but the foliage, and this is winter foliage, um, really blocks out most of the house. Okay, and then from Monument Street, uh, I, I can't quite see the detail of the photos here, but it so looks the like house it's is pretty actually far back. right over here. Mm -hmm. um, and it is, even in the winter, it is very difficult to make out uh, behind all of the um, vegetation. Okay, and that's really what I'm, I'm sort of getting at. I, I don't, it's not, again, it's not that we wouldn't want to see the property. We just uh, don't really need to see it if it's far enough back from the house, right. uh, from the street, sorry. Um, so let me, let me just, let me do this. Thank you for the presentation. Before we uh, go any further, let me just pull the group here the commission. Uh, do we need a site visit uh, for this? And let me just go around. Nia, what do you think? Um, I don't think so. I, I really, my only concern was, of course, was the lights, <laughs> the up lights. I don't, I don't know how many people are hanging out at the cemetery at night, but um, you know, you don't that, want to know who's how many people. I know, out the I know. And I wasn't clear how many lights there are. I mean, there seem to be a lot of those columns. So it could right. be a lot of light. So that was the only part of this whole thing that um, concerned me. Okay. Uh, let me just go around. Luis, what do you think? I, I don't have any any objections. You see, I don't think that we can see it from the road. So I don't think that it's going to be even in our purview. Okay, or, or the cemetery. Melinda, what do you think? I didn't even know this house existed back there. So <laughs> um, I think- Not to put not. too fine a point on it. <laughs> I don't think we can see it. Okay, Paul, what do you think? I, I don't think a site visit is, is uh, productive here. And I just while I have the microphone, I thought the uplighting was uh, to, a, to a covered, uh, porch near the columns. So anyway, I don't think a site visit's relevant. Okay, thank you. I, I think I see where we're going here. Abby, what do you think? Yeah, so I don't think a site visit is necessary, but like Nia, you know, our guidelines are fairly specific as to uplighting. Um, the uplighting is very rarely considered appropriate in the district, even though this house is remote and it's difficult to see. Um, I would be reluctant to approve um, 
uploading just because that's it's a precedent one I don't want to set and two um, I have questions about the visibility of the uplighting from Monument Street or you know other public ways so that's literally my only concern the rest of it does not does not concern me in the least thank you Kate what do you think I'm also concerned about the uplighting eight uplights in what I'm guesstimating is that square footage at night on all at the same time could suddenly make something you know visible that isn't right now from some angle of Monument Street I, I'm not sure I'd, I'd want to see a little more information about that or you know other perspectives okay hang on just a sec uh, Dennis what do you think Dennis, uh, I, I, we've got to like ping Dennis. Catherine, what do you think? Um, I, I don't generally have any real objections. I think the changes proposed um, look very suitable and I think will integrate beautifully within the uh, you know original architecture of the house. Um, I do also share some of the concerns about the uplighting. I understand the um, you know, aesthetic um, direction behind uh, that concept. And I think it would be very dramatic and pretty, but I do agree that um, I would be concerned about the amount of light, um, especially from the, the cemetery perspective. Um, so yeah, I would like to sort of have a better um, understanding of that. Okay, thank you. I think, Sheldon, I might point out that that the uplighting in this case is really going to create the almost the same characteristic that ceiling lights would create. I mean, it's creating a glow on the ceiling. Uh, right. I think we were looking for more. I think we were looking for a more indirect light here. Um, but I have spoken to the client beforehand, knowing that this was potentially, um, you know, contentious. And uh, we, we are willing to uh, create downlighting instead of uplighting at these columns if it is uh, very objectionable. Um, I don't know, I don't think it would at all be visible from Monument Street. I think the lighting effects would be visible from the cemetery, but the lights themselves would not be. Um, however, like, as I say, I think that is a position we are very willing to compromise on and, uh, and make it downlighting instead of uplighting. Planning. Okay, thank you. That sounds like it would be, it might be a good compromise based on the comments I'm hearing. Um, all right, I think we've heard from uh, all the commissioners. Uh, so let me put it out to public comment. Is there public comment on the application at 88 Monument Street? And again, we're not gonna do a site visit as the majority of this, I think all of it is not visible from the public way. Any public comment? I'm just looking around a little bit. All right. Uh, I see no public comment, so let me bring it back to the commission for a motion, please. Nia, are can you? I just, yes. Can I ahead. just um, find out whether whether we're talking about um, downlighting or we're not or we're not talking about downlighting? It does sound like, uh, Sheldon, if I may, you're willing to switch from up down uplighting to downlighting. Right, I think I think uh, if if um, the uplighting will actually scuttle the proposal, then we are willing to switch it. Um, so if anyone has a real objection to it, then um, we, we can certainly um, change that. Can can we please discuss um, wattage? I mean, you know, I may not be in agreement with everybody on this, but in the past we have been really strict with people. And I know this um, application we just passed tonight, um, we approved much higher wattage than we have in the past. And I'm just concerned that this is really getting um, now this is hang on, this, but this is an interior space effectively it's a covered porch correct it is that is correct so we're not these are not lights visible so these aren't on the outside edge no they're inside they would they be are. inside the under the roof then that is not our sorry i misunderstood forgive me oh well i i do want to i i want to make sure that we're clear so that there are no issues um, upon construction 
this screen terrace will still be considered an exterior space. Um, however, it is covered um, within the bounds of the entire screen terrace um, with a roof. Uh, and the uh, uplighting, and uplighting. Strictly, um, uh, going up to the underside of the ceiling of the screen terrace, it would not be illuminating the sky outside of the screen terrace. And in addition, it would be blocked um, from being seen for the most part um, by the columns. Um, you know, you might be able to catch an angle, but it, in fact, I, I actually believe that you might be able to catch a glimpse of downlighting more than you might be uplighting since it is recessed in the pavement. Does that make sense, Nia? Oh, I can't hear you. Um, I think so. So I, I, so I personally don't have any objection to the uplights because it's it's inside of the covered uh, space. But if it's, um, I think if it would lessen uh, objections to sort of light spill outside the the object, let's say, then if the uplights essentially flip up and become downlights, I think that would be less objectionable. Let's put it that way. So Sheldon, I'm not sure what, and, and I, we don't, haven't seen a fixture and, and cuts and so forth. Of course, we're asking you to change this on the fly. So if we approve this uh, and sort of strike the up lights and convert them, we would need to see a, a follow-up, a cut sheet and what have you. And we can certainly get you that if, that, if we take that direction. Okay. Um, I do wanna emphasize one more thing mm -hmm. that the, these lights are actually adjustable to the beam angle um, and we would set it to the smallest angle, so the 15 degree angle, so that they can uplight, you know, to the column um, rather than spreading the beam outward, um, even though there's a pretty low risk that this beam would make it outside of the, the columned area. Yeah, okay. Paul, did you have a comment? I saw you raise your hand. Yeah, well, I mean, before we make a motion, I. I feel that this is a, an example of a situation in which the, the request for uplighting is reasonable. And, but maybe the architect could refresh me. Is the porch visible primarily only from the graveyard? Uh, let me just confirm. So the porch actually does not face the graveyard. It does not face okay. the cemetery. The porch is actually facing um, towards the street, um, which of course is it, quite concealed from there. Yeah. Quite concealed from the street. From the cemetery. From the cemetery, yeah. So the okay. cemetery is on this side of, of the Right, road. okay, okay, I understand. I mean, I, my, I personally think the uplighting, particularly controlling the beam and the fact that the locus of the uplights is behind individual columns, notwithstanding the fact that at an angle you, you would still see some light, that, that that's entirely reasonable. And we ought to give the owner what their little hearts desire on this one. I just don't think this is a serious issue. I, I know I'm the skunk at the book, garden party on this one, but I, I just that, think it's okay. no. I I'll tell you, Paul. I'm totally in agreement, frankly. So, um, oh, I'm well, not anti uplighting necessarily. Yeah. I just felt like you know I wanted to make sure we were considering it because it's you know yeah it could make a sure. space glow with the light spill, but um, I'm not sure how much downlighting would really change it. To be honest, and, that's a good point. Yeah. You know. All right. Somebody feel like making a motion? Paul, do you want to make a motion? Sure. Um, I move that we approve the motion for application for a certificate of appropriateness with respect to the property at 88 Monument Street as regards, um, let me think, replacing garage doors, um, reconstructing the screen porch to a solarium, uh, and Converting the existing terrace to a screened terrace, as well as replacing certain windows. 
as submitted. All right, can I get a second on that? Luis, second. All right, I'm just gonna go around Nia. Aye. Luis? Aye. Melinda? Aye. Paul made the motion, so I'm assuming you're aye. aye. Catherine? Dennis? Aye. Kate? Uh, aye. And Abigail? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. I think we're, I think Sheldon, it's a nice design and it's far enough back from the street and the cemetery that any, I think any light spillage will be pretty well contained. So we, right. I would ask that you do narrow the beam as much as possible and kind of minimize the, the throw, but uh, good luck with the project. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, everyone. Have a great night. All right. You too. Thank you. All right. Well, according to our agenda, it's only 7.35 p.m. So <laughs> we're right on time. So Sue Ann and Liam, thank you. And, and the, the folks from Jake Lilly's office, I am, this, was, this is like the big showstopper. We were waiting for your project and here it is 9.09. So I know we're gonna, let me just start by saying we're gonna definitely wanna do a site visit on, on this project uh, in two weeks, which I think is June 3rd. Mm -hmm. Is that our next meeting? Yes. Would that be possible just to jump to the end before we start the, to meet you all on site around eight o'clock to look at the project together? Of course. Okay. Uh, all right, so starting at the end, uh, why don't we go back to the beginning and uh, I appreciate everybody just hanging in there for another, just a little bit here. Uh, this is an exciting project, uh, a house we've all been eager to see someone give the tender loving care it deserves. And um, maybe if I could ask, uh, I don't know who's going to lead the presentation from Jake Lilly's office. Yeah, Mike, Mike fits the project architect well today. Okay, Mike, would you mind just walking us through the application, please? Oh, Mike gets to share his screen. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. And by the way, I should say this is to renovate the existing building, including replacing windows, uh, some new paint, skylights, family room, screen porch, two car garage, mudroom additions, new light. So the whole nine yards, I'm just going to say. Uh, so, Mike, go ahead. Thank you. Yes, uh, uh, we're happy to be back and <clears throat> we appreciated uh, being uh, on the commission's meeting last month uh, to informally discuss our design. <laughs> Uh, taken all of your feedback and, and gone back and, and really looked, took a hard look at um, the design that we're bringing forward to you today. Uh, so as you can see here, um, which I think we looked at last time, and I think it's always good to kind of start where, um, you know, where we are. This is the, the uh, house at one Sudbury, uh, the 1870s Italian aid home that, you know, everybody in Concord knows. Um, back in its glory days. This is the home now. Uh, as you can see, it's in need of a refresh. Um, and we're thrilled that uh, this house has patrons like Sue Ann and Liam uh, who uh, have taken this on and are really looking to continue the restoration efforts uh, on this, this house and this property. Um, so a quick run through on the site, it's right at the juncture of Main Street and Sudbury. Uh, the, the home is located right in the center of the property. There's no existing garage. Um, there's a lot of tree cover uh, to this property. There's large hedges at the front, um, front sidewalk of the property, existing driveway on the left-hand side. Um, on the, the left-hand side, the, the abutters are uh, a commercial building uh, and 99 Main Street here, which is uh, sort of set back uh, from Main Street, but faces directly uh, towards Sue Ann and Liam's lot. And as you can see from these photos of the um, from Main Street and Sudbury Road, uh, the house is set back a bit uh, from the road, but you can see this large uh, uh, amount of tree cover at the front of the property, as well as these hedges here. Um, so in, in a particular note, it's, it's a, a large mix of um, really large deciduous canopy trees, as well as some large uh, spruce trees, which do provide cover um, 
and effectively screen off parts of the property, especially this area here uh, near the driveway. So along with the efforts to restore the existing house, we also need to update it for the family that is uh, that will be making this their home. So what we're proposing is a one and a half story uh, garage uh, and breezeway mudroom addition um, on the left hand side of the, the house here, as well as a one story family room and, and screen porch addition at the rear of the house. Um, there's an exi the existing <laughs> spruce tree that I mentioned that sits directly in front of this proposed addition. Uh, is right here. Uh, and as you can see, all of the um, existing large trees that line the property, uh, especially at the front and this left-hand side, um, will be remaining, uh, and especially to, to kind of uh, use them to effectively screen off a, a good portion of this uh, proposed addition. So as you can see in this first rendering, uh, that large spruce tree is very prominent in front of where we sit. Um, and in a second, I will uh, flip to another one that uh, lowers the transparency a bit so we can see a little bit more of the, the addition. Um, we wanted the garage to feel as if it were an original barn or carriage house uh, to the property uh, that was eventually connected to the house. Um, so as we look at it in a little bit more detail, um, we wanted this proposed addition to feel appropriate in size and scale to the main house without competing with it. Um, the addition doesn't want to feel like a little bump on the side of the house. It needs to be prominent enough um, that it respects the architecture uh, that exists here. But, um, you know, we don't want it to compete um, with this house, nor feel like a uh, small afterthought that was, you know, added onto this at, at a much later date. Um, the exterior details of the garage are meant to complement the existing house um, while not competing with it or taking away from it. So the eave and the overhang details, um, you know, these are in line with the existing house, but as you can see on the existing house, there's very deep uh, overhang and eave details, typical of Italianate architecture. And so we complement that without necessarily uh, matching it and really trying to compete with that. The brow over these double windows uh, speaks back to uh, similar details on the existing house, but we've thinned it down and um, not made it uh, quite as chunky as, as some of these details, again, so that it sort of fits in with the, the scale and mass of this, uh, this addition. And the breezeway connector here is set back even further from, uh, from the garage. So it really um, is a connecting piece to, from the garage to the main house um, and really separates the massing of these two uh, architectural elements. This is another view for, uh, straight on from the front. You can see the addition in the back here uh, and with the, these large trees um, at the front here. Um, one thing, the, the porch is also in uh, pretty poor condition. And so this is a, a part of the proposal is to uh, restore and, and repair this existing front porch. And as you can see from the view at the front right of the property, uh, the, that garage is set back enough on that left-hand side of the house that it's not visible from this, this point of view, um, looking at that. Um, you can see a small sliver of the screen porch addition in the back here uh, that uh, is again, sort of set back from that right-hand side elevation. And then even though it's not visible from the public way, this is uh, kind of a, a rear and side view of what that garage addition looks like. So as we look at the front elevation, we're also proposing to bring back uh, door shutters uh, to the, the main entry door. Uh, the hinges still exist. Uh, and what you see, what we're proposing is, is set in this inset detail here, a um, little obscured by the existing porch columns. Um, so in one, with the front entry, one additional item we'd like to discuss and have the commission weigh in on is the possibility of adding glass uh, to the upper panels of the front doors, the existing front doors. Um, this is something that was recently proposed uh, after these, these drawings were updated. So this isn't, that doesn't ne necessarily reflect uh, in these drawings here, but it is something we, we'd like to um, uh, potentially add in if, if able and if the uh, commission is amenable to it. Um, and the reason being the entry foyer here uh, tends to be very dark at the interior. And we really feel that um, natural light filtering in through, these, uh, through the front doors would, would really make a, a huge difference. Uh, and then again, so we're again, sort of showing where in line uh, as you look at a, a 
uh, straight on elevation where that large spruce tree uh, falls in relationship to the, to the garage addition. Uh, and then at this point, uh, I'd like to have Tom Lee, the landscape architect, uh, talk a little bit about the proposed landscape, uh, especially at the, the front part of the property. Uh, good evening, this is Tom. Hey, Tom. Uh, Welcome. Thank you. I am the landscape architect and uh, we're gonna show you a, a, a tree removal plan and a proposed landscape plan. And uh, like I believe what Mike said or stated already, the most, all the large trees in the front are preserved, including a sweet gum at uh, the road, uh, a large uh, plane tree uh, on the other uh, side of it. And then the, of course, the Norway spruce that uh, is standing in front of the garage and then all the uh, trees along the side property line. But at the back, we are proposing to remove a series of Norway maples and some over mature, very large pines that are very close to, uh, I believe this the north is down. So the west side, the bay wind near the, the bay window of the house. Uh, they, are, they are towering over the house. I think you saw, you may have seen it in the, some of the site photos that are way in the back, but um, probably, probably less than 10 feet from the house. So in our proposed landscape plan, the first move we thought was, uh, you know, this house really has a civic presence in the townscape. And we, when we saw that historic photo, it seems like it, you know, we should recreate that parking path, that generous, gracious, uh, it, almost uh, embrace of the, the street that, that uh, uh, was uh, dominant in the front. So we created that pathway that curves to the front uh, porch and entry, and then also, uh, uh, basically fades as it approaches the driveway uh, where we'll be inserting a few pavers, probably a material like reclaimed curbing that is present on the site uh, for guest parking. It's a very narrow driveway and relatively tight uh, parking court. So we're trying to gain some uh, space and maneuvering room. Um, the, the, court, the parking area is very simple, just a simple, uh, rectangle in front of the garage. And most of the focus of the landscape uh, is in the backyard where you can see some contour lines wrapping the house. The house, the, the finished floor of the house is about I believe, four feet above the surrounding grade. So we uh, wanted to create a, a, a platform, a base for, the, for the, uh, this grand architecture. And it, so this, these contours are, are, that are tight together are suggest or shows of indicates a berm, a, a slope bank. So there's a flat area around the house and it slopes down to the rest of the yard. And there's a set of stairs that are centered on the, uh, the entry foyer that extends to the back of the house. Um, and in the landscape is just a simple palette of open lawn. Uh, the trees we're taking down, we're proposing replanting with a series of trees that create a, a, a filtering screen this property has the benefit of uh, borrowing the view to, from the, the adjacent property, the open, openness. Uh, so this is to maintain, to give some privacy, but also maintain a sense of openness. And that's the gist of the landscape design. All right, thank you. Uh, all right, so I think we are gonna, uh, want to look around at the property since it's uh, <coughs> very visible from the street, but let me go see uh, what, if folks have any thoughts before we meet in a couple weeks. Uh, Nia, any thoughts? Um, my initial impressions are very positive. I think the, um, the uh, garage building has been designed very sensitively where it is uh, subservient to the main uh, building in terms of the detailing, um, but still, you know, is very much in keeping with the house. Um, I have some concerns about the, um, the um, connector piece. Um, I know a great deal of discussion has been about the uh, enormous spruce 
and having had an enormous evergreen on my property that looked extremely healthy go over completely out of the blue, um, I urge my fellow commissioners to look at all parts of this application. Um, in the past, we have always looked at um, structures without the benefit of any landscaping in front of it. So please bear that in mind. I'm a little concerned about the connector piece. Um, there's other details that I want to um, hear from the others on. I was concerned about the wall at the front of uh, the property. Um, the picture that was provided is a very formal wall. Um, I don't think I have seen any walls in sort of downtown center Concord. We more typically see fences, whether they be picket fences or wrought iron. So the, the, a very formal wall there gives me some um, concern. I'll leave the windows to Dennis. Um, I'm trying to look, there's a whole lot of, let's see. I think that's, that's it for starters. I think it's just gonna be really important to see the property. I'm excited to see it. I'm just delighted that this house is getting the attention uh, that it needs. Um, so this is a very exciting project. Thanks, Nia. Uh, Luis. I think that this is a great project and uh, we definitely need to look at it uh, on site and um, consider all the issues that some of them have been brought by Nia and I'm sure there will be more. Okay, thank you. Melinda. Well, I'm looking at this um, connector from the garage and it's reminding me of the library <laughs> um, a little bit, but um, it, it, I, I'm not sure I get the, um, the windows and so forth accurately from this picture, but I look forward to seeing it. I, uh, I work at an office right next door to this building, so I've spent a lot of time looking at this uh, lovely home for a lot of years now, and uh, it definitely will... Um, be fabulous when it's done, I'm sure. Thank you, Melinda. Paul. Uh, just one question with respect to the site visit. Um, to the extent trees you anticipate removing or want to remove certain trees, they, I presume, will be marked for us to identify and, and see what the, have a better vision of the landscape? Yes, they can be marked. Okay. Anything Paul? else? You can wait from my point. Okay, uh, Abigail. Um, so I'm I'm thrilled the house has new custodians. It's such a special um, house, and, and it's in such a special location in town. Um, I think my, as Nia said, my my overall impressions of the project are quite positive. Um, likewise, my primary concern is the connector, the breezeway. Um, I'm going to want to take a really close look at that. Um, I think. The primary structure and the garage structure um, are really complementary. The garage structure, I'm really pleased with the design of. And that connector piece, the design of it and whether or not it exists at all um, are gonna be a, a real issue for me um, that I wanna examine closely. Um, in terms of the site visit, I mean, there's this is a big, big project, lots of details. We'll have lots of discussions. If the garage itself could simply be staked out so I could get a sense of size and proximity to the uh, lot line and the connector and the, and the house, that would be really helpful um, for me and the rest of it. I'm just excited to see um, in person. Thank you, Abby. Uh, Kate. Um, I really uh, appreciate uh, the attention that was taken to um, mass the garage the way it, you resulted in it, that it's not so small to look kind of like a silly tacked on thing and it is, but yet clearly subordinate to the house. But I think you really um, hit the nail on the head with what you've got proposed right now for the garage. Um, and again, as others have said, it's the connector that gives me pause, but there, I think there's probably lots of room to um, interpret that in a way that we're comfortable. And, um, you know, but I'm very positive reactions. It's going to be a really exciting, great project. Um, and oh, you asked about glass in the front doors. Uh, let's see, 
I think that would be perfectly appropriate for this house. 1850s Italian it. D Dennis can weigh in on here too, but I think glass would be fine since you asked. And that's about it. Thank you, Kate. Uh, Dennis. I think this is an excellent proposal. I'm very excited about what you're doing with this house. What I'm going to say, I'll just echo everybody else's comments. Uh, I think uh, in, a, in your opening, um, dis our opening discussions on this, you talked about that connector sort of disappearing. And I think you're going in the wrong direction. I think you should make it go with the rest of the house. And so I think it should, should look like it's, it's part of a period detail. And I think it'd be more successful. I agree with Nia that uh, that tree is very mature in front. So I would not count on that to screen anything. I don't know how long it's gonna last. It's lovely now, but who knows? Uh, she made a comment about the stone wall. You didn't mention that, but uh, if you're proposing that for the front, um, I like the hedge that's there now, but uh, I could see a fence would be, would be lovely. Uh, everybody suggested that I, that I comment on the windows. Uh, my only comment is, I don't know why you're replacing the windows. So I'd like to, you have to make a better case for any windows you're replacing, uh, particularly if they're original in this house. So, uh, and I don't know that. Windows on the door. I'd like to look at uh, look at that more, but other than that, I think it's a really, really exciting proposal, and I think it's going to be wonderful when it's done. Thank you, Dennis. Catherine. Um, I I don't have much more to add from uh, what my fellow commissioners have already stated. Um, I think it's a great project, and um, yeah, I don't really have any further comments. Okay, thank you. Uh, and the only other thing I'd add to the commission is just to remind you, let's not get too tied up and talk about the connector. Because wow, that, that sounds like Gordon Lightfoot. <laughs> Gordon Lightfoot that, wants that's to right. That's Katie playing it upstairs. It's coming in and my sono is now below. She keeps turning it on. <laughs> so, you know, turn I, turn it up. Lightfoot, he sings in my range. So I love Gordon Lightfoot. Uh, anyway, so um, thank you all, and, and thank you for staying so late to do this presentation. I also think this is going to be a fantastic project, so uh, thank you for such a complete presentation. We really do appreciate the detail, the number of drawings, the landscape design. It's great to see it so well described, and it really helps us with our process. So um, I think what we'll do is we'll continue... Uh the application uh, till the third and meet you at 8 a.m. Uh, on the site, assuming it's not, you know, a thunderstorm. Well, I guess even if it is raining. <laughs> no, if it's a thunderstorm, we won't meet. So um, hang on a sec. Let me just open it up to public comment. Is there public comment on the application for work to be done at one Sudbury Road? Don't see any hands. Do you see any hands? Heather. Oh, yes. John Graham, Mr. Graham. Please go ahead. Just uh, you have to unmute yourself, sir. Yes. There you go. That would help, wouldn't it? There you go. Um, John Graham, 99 Main Street. Uh, we're the immediate neighbors on the east east side of the house. Um, and my only question is sort of a process question. I think, you know, we have no objections. And indeed, I think we support the plan as we've seen it. Um, and I appreciate hearing all the comments from the commissioners. And I'm, 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 I'm a rookie um, at these proceedings. So I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what my role is as a, as a neighbor, um, and I guess the, you mentioned there'll be a site visit and does that imply that there'll be another hearing like this? Um, and, you know, is that something where we, we, you know, we can participate or listen to the discussion? Yes, I can answer that. The site meeting will be a public meeting, the site visit on the uh, 3rd of June at 8 in the morning, so you're welcome to attend. And the way this works is we are one of the, uh, when you're in an historic district in town, you have to, we're one of the gates that has to be passed before you can apply for a building permit. And so this is the preliminary hearing. In fact, this, th these folks came to us a few weeks back, sort of uh, in the additional business 
uh, just to float the idea. We gave some preliminary comments. Now this is the first, the application is now open. We will meet on the third, uh, just tour the site. We won't have any discussion on site, but then we'll meet that evening, same time. In fact, this will be the first application. So you finally get to go first uh, at seven o'clock. And we'll do, I, I think, I don't know if you've been at the entire meeting, tonight, but you've seen how we, um, yeah, we have no. a present, go ahead. I, 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 we, we sat through the whole. Okay, so, and that's what we would do again is we'll have a presentation again. We'll discuss our site visit. We'll go back and forth. Um, and if we can arrive at a, at a consensus, we will take a vote, but that's, but you're welcome to, to the meeting, uh, to the public meeting. Um, I also think you're involved as a, as an abutter at different points during the construction phase when, when it gets to that. But at this point, all these meetings are public and you're welcome to attend. Okay. Well, th thank you for that. Um, as, as I said, you know, I think we're, we support what, Sue and Liam are proposing, and we're looking forward to having new neighbors. Okay, great. Thank you, John. Other public comments on the application at One Sudbury Road. I'm looking to see if people will wave at me or. Oh, that's uh, yes, Samuel Bird. I see. I, there are two people there though. Un unmute. Oh, yep. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Hi, folks. Good evening. Um, we are we are sort of the other abutters. Uh, we're at 101 Main Street, uh, immediately behind uh, John and Carrie Graham. And <clears throat> I appreciate this uh, this particular presentation, particularly since I spent about I was trying to remember. I think it was either somewhere between nine and eleven years on the HDC. So I kind of have right. my stripes. Um, uh, so I, I do know the process. I don't have any process questions, um, but uh, I would like to um, just lend a voice of support for this. I think that this was a, uh, a very care carefully and well-crafted uh, proposal. Um, as a professional architect, I can only say that there's never been a set of plans put before me that I couldn't tweak somewhere. But, um, but these are, the any tweaks that I could imagine would be extremely minor. So um, I'm very appreciative of it. I also, um, I'm not familiar, I just wanna say that I'm not familiar with you folks as a board. I haven't really been following the HDC activities lately. Um, I did watch this meeting from the beginning and uh, I just wanna applaud you. I, I, sat, I sat there with my old HDC hat on and I kept thinking, gee, I'd make a comment about that. And, and sure enough, one of you or, or multiple members uh, made those very same comments. So um, uh, thank you for being, uh, continuing the watchdog duties. And um, uh, I look forward to this project going forward. All right, thank you for that. Uh, usually we run out of gas about nine o'clock, but you know we're we're pushing pushing through tonight. But thank you. I know you. that no, feeling. It's a, it's a great commission. These are some fantastic citizens we've got volunteering here. Uh, other Very public good. comments. Uh, I think we've hit the yes. That's it. All right. So I would. Are you there, Peter? Peter, we lost, we lost your audio for a moment, but I'm guessing you're calling for a motion from the commission. We, joint, we jointly move to continue this matter to June 3rd, <laughs> subject to the site visit on that day. Second. <laughs> All, All in favor? favor? Aye. <laughs> So ordered. <laughs> Peter, do you want us to make a motion to adjourn for you? Yeah. Oh, we've got yet. we've got other business. Other business. Oh. Nice try. Right there? <laughs> oh man, hang on a sec. 
We got you, Peter. We've got you back, Peter. Does that did. work or no? Yes. It worked. You're muted. I was wondering what all that sound was, and it was my my earbuds dying. So I'm oh. so sorry. We're we're all done. We moved. We're on. all done. Yeah. We've okay, adjourned. Good. Done. <laughs> no, you're not. No, we're we're on to we're on to, we're other, on to business. other business. All right. So continue your application. Continue to the third. Thank you, folks. All right. Sorry. Thank you, Peter. Technical. Thank you, board. Thank you very much. All right. We'll see you in a Thanks couple of weeks. Bye bye now. All right. I heard Mark Gidding's voice. That's me. I've been waiting. You're like you're like the ghost of Christmas oh, past. Or something. Never, never go up. away, right? Sure. No, it's okay. It's great to see you. Hi, so Mark. We're, we're under discussions, and I'm representing 70 Monument Square Certificate Amendment for the Rectory Building. Okay. Two items, as you probably know. Um, one is fairly simple. When approval was given for the back of the building, there's a white hardy board and the trim was going to be painted to match the hardy board. Mm -hmm. The recommendation is that we not paint the hardy board, but we get that as a pre-finished and we get the trim to go along with it as pre-finished. That's an example of it. Don't yep. forget this is just on the back of the building. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what we'd like is permission to use the trim pre-finished with the hardy board pre-finished on the back of the building. Okay. That's one. Makes sense. Do you want us to, no, we're going to vote on this all at once. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's really late. I don't mean to keep everybody. We have other things to do. Okay. So the other issue pertains to the trees at the side of the building. On the left side of the building facing Main Street, there are seven trees there, four of which were given approval to be removed and a four inch diameter maple was going to be put in its place. When we looked into it, we discovered that the remaining trees, which are what are called over mature pine trees, are not in very good shape. So we'd like to take all seven of those trees out of there and put the four inch maple in its place. The concern from my perspective, having been involved in this in the past, is the sight line from Main Street to the back of this facility. I mean, that's really what the, the concern about this whole construction is the back of the building where we had to put in the staircase and the elevators. That's a fairly large um, addition to the building, as you know. Now, when you look at this from Main Street, there are already several trees that intercede that sight line and the four inch maple will help that. But the pine trees that are there that we wanna take out that originally were not in part of the original plan are really over mature pine trees. It's not a safe situation as you know. I think the whole town suffers from people who put in pine trees. I have them around my house that are now, you know, 40 years old and are prone to disease and coming down. And we really like to get rid of those. So those are the two amendments that I've asked the commission to consider for this application. All right, uh, let's just see what folks think. Mia, what do you think? Um, I am not familiar with already painted hardy hardy board. If it looks the same as hardy board painted after the fact. That's what it looks like right there. Um, yeah, I know, Mark, but seeing a photo photograph on a computer is not the same thing as seeing. I'm just saying other people may be more familiar with this product, so I'm not going to comment on it. Um, the trees I'm super upset about. I know that the pines are, are problematic. Um, as you, as you remember for this application, one of the things the pines do for this building is they give it scale and they bring it down. Um, you know, the, we knew the only way you could put, um, make this building work was to put the elevator on the outside. It is taller than the actual main part of the building. And the pines were very instrumental in at least giving that scale. Um, if in fact they have been determined to be 
bona fide um, need to come down. I'm sorry, one four inch maple does not do it for me. What would you like to see us do? Uh, multiple trees. Define. I... I, I don't know how much uh, space there is, but I'm, I'm looking at a, a, like a whole row there all the way down to the back of the parking lot that looks completely open to me now with, without the pine trees. Pine trees. Okay, thank you, Nia. Um, so I, ju I just think there needs to be more screening. And unfortunately, there's no way we can put in a tree that has the height of, of the existing pines, which um, did a, a decent job. But I, I totally understand that they can be problematic and safety hazards, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you, Nia. Luis. Oh, you're muted. There you go. I, I echo Nia's comment. Um, I uh, don't have. I, I personally don't have any problems with the with the paint and the color and so forth. But uh, as far as the trees is concerned, um, you know, I I think that those trees, even if they are in that shape, they are serving a purpose. So perhaps uh, one option could be to uh, uh, cut them, but very selectively, and don't cut all seven of them at the same time. Well, we already have, we already have approval to cut down four of them. Well, then then you stick to cutting four instead of seven. No, that's not, uh, the way to go. But but again, I'm I'm saying that uh, trees there have a very important role, and if you're going to cut some trees, then it would uh, be appropriate to replace them for for trees that are uh, very mature and obviously very expensive. Uh, but that uh, will, in a short time, fulfill the same purpose that the current trees are serving. Thank you, Luis. Melinda. I think it would be nice to screen that parking lot in back there from Main Street, um, which is what you're going to see full on, um, let alone the elevator, which is a little controversial. Um, I suppose you've set that maple right there so that you will cover that, but it'll take a while. Um, I think there's, uh, there are other solutions. I think you could put in arbor varieties that would grow quickly and be tall, um, but I don't think you should leave it um, blank. I think we're open to other suggestions. I mean, I, you know, I understand the concern, so, okay. Uh, all right, Paul. Yeah, I, I mean, th this is, this is not particularly incisive comment, but, you know, the maple will grow or two maples will grow and they become pretty full trees. So I think we ought to keep that in mind. But um, I, I think I need to go by there and look at it. I, I don't know whether another site visit is in the cards at this stage of the since we're through the application at this juncture, but I'd like to take another look rather than have to vote on whether it's four trees alone or seven trees. Okay. Okay. Mark, would you Mark, be okay with yeah, that? Yeah, we, we can do that. We, we had to reschedule the tree cutting down and it's now scheduled for the 15th of June. Okay, so we have yeah, time. So maybe we could roll this into I June want, 3rd. I want people to be comfortable with it. Okay. okay. So why don't we say we will come by on the third, just real quick, Mia? Can, can I, Mark? Get... Can, Mark, can I just ask you a question? Mm -hmm. The pines that are there now, yep, on the side there, have the four that you've had permission to remove? Have those been removed? No. We'll no. Wait. So nothing has been removed to date. That's correct. Okay. All right. Um, we, we would it be it all at once? You know, it's an expensive process, and you know, it only makes right. sense. Would it be possible for um, you know, if if we do end up, on a, I, Peter, I don't want to tread on your toes here, but if we all right. end up going independently to go and look, or even if it's a scheduled site visit, would it be possible for you to to um, do uh, flagging tape on the trees that you that have already been approved to be taken down? Sure. And just so that we know, okay, those are definitely going, and then we can look at the other ones that um, 
or you could walk over there after your site visit at one Sudbury Road on. Yeah, Third. yeah. I mean, we can all go independently. I mean, that I yep. just want to make sure that they're flagged so that we right. understand what's because I went and looked, but I was unclear what right. the current situation is. Yep. No problem. Thank you. We can do that. Okay, uh, Abby, thoughts? Um, so I think I think going on June third after um, one Sudbury Road makes a lot of sense. Mark, could you bring the hardy board and trim sample? Um, like Nia, I'm not familiar with that as a pre-painted product. Can it? Is it custom tinted or is it just white? White. It's just white. Okay. So if if you could bring that, just I haven't seen that before when it's it's. No, had you had a meeting, I would have because I. You know, I have had samples of it. There's just no. No, question. totally, and that's why I think if we go there on June third, that's an easy way for us to see that in person. I don't think I'm going to have any problem with it, but I, if we're going to be there anyway, I'd like to take a peek at it. Like Nia and everyone else, I, there's going to need to be more screening if all those trees come down. But when we're on site, we can figure out what would be a, a good that's plan fine. for that. That's fine. Okay, thank you, Abby. Kate. Um. Yeah. What Abby said. <laughs> it's late. <laughs> she needs, you know, what Thank Abby you. said. Yeah, no, it's true though. I'm not being. I'm not being cheeky. I mean it. That's um, the name of your. That's the name of Kate's band, actually. What Abby? Uh, <laughs> okay, Dennis. Any thoughts? You're muted, though. Okay, I'm unmuted. Um, I was not on the committee when, or on the commission when this was. Uh, first approved. So I, I, I agree with Paul. I really need to go over there and take a look at it. Okay. But it needs more screen. I'll say that. Okay. Thank you, Catherine. Yes, I'm always disappointed when trees have to be taken down. And I do understand that some of these might be um, in too fragile a state to remain um, over time. So I, I do appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I would just echo my fellow commissioners and say, I would definitely want to know that there's a plan in place for a lot of additional screening or trees to be um, planted where the pines are being taken away. So, All right. Uh, I think you've heard everything, Mark. I have, I'm, I'm going to have no problem with the hardy board. That stuff looks fine when it's painted. Um, so why don't we, uh, is there any public comment on the, uh, well, this isn't an application, so, <clears throat> but is there any public comment on the amendment here? I don't see any. So why don't we have a motion made, please? Do we um, need a motion if this is I think to just a discussion? No, I guess you're right. We're just, no, well, no. I guess to, to have the site visit. Yeah, we can just, I mean, we can have a motion to continue it. We don't need one, but. Okay, then if we don't need one, let's, <laughs> let's do it right, right. it's late. All, All right, right, so Mark. Thank you very much. So we'll 8, see you. 8.30 on the 3rd. Well, I'm gonna go look at one Sudbury Road at 8 o'clock. Okay, good. good, well then we'll I'm see. I'm not you. gonna turn that down. That's, that's, a, that's an interesting project, okay? So anyway, All right. nice see you to there. talk to you all. Okay, nice Bye -bye. to see you, Mark. Thank yep. you. All right, uh, let's try to go as quickly as we can, Heather, here. It's almost 10 o'clock. Uh, 44 Barrett's Mill Road, tell me what's going on there. I believe they're no longer coming to the meeting. Did we, we, we wore them out? We can skip that one. <laughs> okay, what was that for? I, don't know. I believe it was to discuss solar panels. They were emailing okay. with Heather Carey. Okay. Uh, Nothing new on Jenny Dugan Acres. I don't have any new news there. Uh, the Main Street Historic District expansion, you need something back from me tomorrow, correct? Yeah, no I sent you the motion, motion is okay. due tomorrow. I sent that to you. And then I sent you the town meeting materials summary page. Let's okay, I'll try, to, I'll try to get to that. Uh, the, heat, the hearing went fine. A few of you were there. Thank you again for the support. Uh, and, and so we're you, sort of steady as she goes. And you both received uh, an email I sent to you about the chair's meeting requesting the narrative, correct? Yes. Yeah, yes. I drafted okay. that already and sent it to right. Peter. Thank okay. You. And Louise, thank you for attending the chair's meeting. I was not available. All right. Uh, and then uh, how about minutes? I read through the minutes. Mia, any thoughts, Louise? Oh, you're no muted. thoughts, no. <laughs> I sent him my edits. 
Okay, can we accept them as uh, edited? The three minutes for four one, four fifteen, and five six. Has anybody else read them? I stand. I, I, didn't, I didn't have any. I don't have any reactions. Right, right. Yeah, where you're at, it's just grammatical. Yeah. All right, so that be our final motion before we adjourn. Is anyone willing to make that motion to accept those minutes? <laughs> I move that we accept uh, the, uh, the minutes from, uh, help me out. It's April 1st, April 15th, and May 6th. April uh, 1st, April 15th, and May 6th. And a second? Second. Uh, all in favor, uh, Nia, Aye. Luis, Melinda, Paul, Aye. Catherine, Dennis, Kate, Abby, we're all raising our hands. The, the minutes are in the record. Thank you, Nia, for the, your edits and for other folks for reading them. I think that's it. Yes, Heather? Yes. Thank you for all for hanging hey. in there. Hey. And thank you. That was our longest meeting this year. All right, so we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Site visit at, um, Sudbury, at, Road. at uh, Sudbury Road. Wow. Great. All right, it's been a long night. Thank you, folks. Thanks for hanging in there, Jane. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. See you soon. <laughs>